Howdy, this is Mackenzie Franklin from Side Game LLC here in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Today we're going to be organizing Viscounts of the West Kingdom, designed by Shem Phillips and S.J. McDonnell and published by Garpill Games. This is a fully sleeved, fully expanded copy of the game that's stored in the collector's box with no lid lift, and it's organized to get gameplay started as soon as possible, as well as to facilitate things during the game. If you have any questions about what you see here, please let me know down in the comments below, and for links to anything that I talk about here, please take a look in the description of the video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please make sure that you do. It is the best way to help us grow. Let's get started organizing Viscounts of the West Kingdom. Let's lift off the lid, and inside you'll see that we have all of our map boards on top. Let's move those map boards to the side, and we also have our new manuscript boards. Go ahead and shuffle these up and deal one to each player for that different starting color bonus. We have all of our rule books for the game, for Viscounts, Keeper of Keys, as well as the Gates of Gold, and then all four of your new player boards. These replace the old player boards in the game. They're now recessed, so you're not going to be moving around those two different black and white markers here, and you still have that solo mode on the back here. You also have spot at the bottom here for your chest tokens. And that brings us to our main section, and as you can see, we've made some modifications to the original insert, particularly in this upper right section. We've used an X-Acto knife to trim out this original container that was supposed to store all of your resources in one bin, as well as your coins in your communal building. There's also a lot of wasted space on the bottom here, so I thought it was for the best to just remove it straight out, using an X-Acto knife to cut around the edges here. Make sure you do use an X-Acto knife for this, it will make the job easy, but it'll take some patience to get it right. The biggest boon for removing that section of your insert is now you can store all of your resources in their own separate containers. I really like using these small Dollar Tree bins. You get them 10 for a dollar. You simply pop the lid off like so and put it under like this. It becomes a dish where you can get your resources. And they all fit very nicely here for all of your three different resources. Let's go ahead and take those out. And as I said earlier, we've got our stone, our ink wells, and lastly, our gold resources. To the right of all of our resources, you have one bag of player components. I'll get into detail about what's inside out of these bags a little bit later. And then you have, lastly, a container holding all of your metal coins. Now, this is going to be a bit larger because of those metal coins. They're a bit thicker, so they're not going to fit into one of those smaller bins. So what you're going to need to do is get one that's a little bit larger. You could also put them in a plastic bag, or if you'd like to, you could even trim that original insert to make it so that it's removable. Now, I do prefer having that nice flat bottom here so it doesn't move around and having a lid, but it's up to you. And one last thing about the resources, if you do want to keep the included tray, you can go ahead and just leave it how it is, put all the resources in one side and all the coins in the other, and there will be room for those player components in this top section here if you put them in this bottom left corner with all of your manuscript boards and then your main game boards here. So there should be room if you do want to keep this initial insert. With all of the resources out of the way, that brings us to all of the cards. We're going to start in this upper left section with all of your small cards. These are going to include things like your debts, your deeds, and then all of your new expansion cards that are going to vary the game by changing the reward for the center, having the identical buildings bonus, etc. And you also have your modifiers here for multipliers in case you need more resources. For our copy of the game, we use the mini European board game size sleeves from Game Plus Products. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can find sleeves for your copy of the game. And while we're on the topic of sleeves, for our large cards here, we use the Gamegenic Standard American Matte Board Game Sleeves. I love the matte finish on these, the way they shuffle, and they do fit in the included insert. Next up, let's dive into these large cards, starting off with our King's Order cards in this bottom right section, as well as all of our starter cards. You're also going to have some additional starter cards from the base game that you'll replace when you include the expansions. So just put them face down like so, and they'll store all of these in that bottom right section. Above that, you'll have your Prosperity, as well as your Poverty card here, as well as all of your starting cards. These are going to tell you the actions, the points, as well as your starting location and resources. Next up, you'll have all of your Outsider cards here from the expansion, followed by all of your Public Buildings, and then your Solo cards. This is all going to be in that upper right section here. In this bottom left section here, you'll have about half of your Townsfolk cards. We just have them face down here, and you can see that they're indicated by this black background on the names of the cards. So these are all of the Townsfolk. And above that, we have the remaining cards, including our heroes with this brown background on the names, as well as any remaining Townsfolk, which we put face down here. So you'll go ahead and shuffle these up and put them into their appropriate spots. We've got a silica gel packet in here for freshness, and then we have a stack of all of your chest tiles. These are going to be specifically for all of the players, not the AI cards, and you'll just shuffle them up and then put four face up on the board. 
In these bottom two sections, you'll have all of your manuscript tokens. You're going to need to randomize these for setup, make sure that they do have that black background, and you'll put your starting manuscripts on the very bottom of one of the stacks. So go ahead and shuffle those up and place them on their appropriate spots on the board. In this upper left corner, you'll have a variety of different components. Starting off with our starting manuscript tokens with these silver backgrounds, you also have your first player token and all of your solo AI chests. You'll have three of them that you'll put underneath their board. And lastly, you'll have all of your communal buildings, this gray color, and you'll put those in an area that's available in the center next to maybe their cards, or you can leave them in the box until they're needed. In the center of our insert, we have our castle, and you're never going to need to rearrange these outer or inner rings, so you can leave them where they are and just put it nicely in that center there. And that brings us to our last section under the castle, all of your bagged player components. Now we've actually used that X-Acto knife once again to remove that center insert from the middle of your organizer. But I do think that this is the right move. This was going to store all of your manuscripts as well as your chests, and the chests didn't all fit in here, including the ones from the expansions. So I felt that this was the right call, stacking all the chest tokens in the upper right, as well as the manuscripts here, because it does serve that same purpose. In addition, you now don't have to store your player pieces in the wells here, because I felt that when you actually store them in the wells, it was really annoying to have to pull them out every game. In this case, all you do is grab a bag and then pass it to the player. They dump it out on their table and then they're ready to go. They have all the components they'll need to play the game. Fitting snugly, only three of your bagged player components are actually going to be in this section. As we saw earlier, those blue components were set on the upper right section here with our resources, or if you kept the insert intact, it would be in that bottom left section. And before we close up, let's quickly look over what's going to go into one of these player bags. In each player bag, store their colored Viscount, all 20 of their workers, their virtue marker, and their corruption marker. And lastly, three per color, you're going to have three of the guild halls, three of the workshops, and three of the trading posts. And with those player components taken care of, that's everything inside of our insert for Viscounts of the West Kingdom. Let's go ahead and pack it up. First off, let's start off with three of the player component bags in this center section here. Now that we have room, since we've trimmed our insert, we'll place our castle on top of that. Next up, we'll place all of our chest tokens in that upper right section. And then your remaining varied components in this upper left section. We'll put our small mini European cards in this upper left section, our townsfolk card in the bottom left section here, and then our remaining townsfolk as well as our heroes in this middle left section. We'll put all of our starting cards and our king's order cards in this bottom right, and all our remaining large cards in this upper right section. We've got a silica gel packet in here for freshness, as well as your metal coins in this upper right area, followed by our three containers of resources and this last bag of player components. Next up, we'll put our cardboard player boards inside, followed by all of your rule books, all five of your map tiles, and lastly, all of our manuscript boards. And that is organizing Viscounts of the West Kingdom. If you have any questions about what you saw here, please let me know down in the comments below. And if you're looking for any of the things that I talked about in this video, please take a look in the description of the video. How do you organize your copy of Viscounts of the West Kingdom? Where does this rank in the trilogy for you? Do you like the new expansions for Viscounts of the West Kingdom, or do you prefer playing with just the base game? We'd love to hear what you think. But thank you so much for watching. Side Game Strong.